The adoption roadmap pattern is the one pattern that is not documented in the patterns collection in the book. It's come out since the book was published, but it is available as a separate technical report from the SEI website. This is a variant on the factory pattern. The factory pattern is the one that gives you the overall roadmap for a product line organization. And any organization thinking of becoming a product line organization can use this as the overall steady state depiction of product line operations. But what we found was when we look at this factory pattern and we observe what people have actually done to get started in software product lines, one of the difficulties they run into is they encounter a lack of process discipline. And in the existing factory pattern, the area, the practice area of process discipline doesn't occur until the middle of the diagram in things like each asset and the assembly line pattern. And for organizations that are weak in process discipline, that's leaving it a bit late. So we created a variant of the factory pattern called the adoption factory pattern that pulls out the process discipline practice area over to the left of the diagram and created some additional views and focus areas, as we call them, for looking at the overall factory pattern variant. So here is adoption factory created from the factory pattern with process discipline pulled over to the side where you are also setting up the product line, coming up with the funding model and the structure and determining what to build. And for organizations that are weak in process discipline, they need to shore up those deficiencies early on and not wait until they are partway into the development of core assets or products. Uh, we've actually seen this in um, engineering organizations. Engineering organizations love to dive into the mechanics of architecture and components before they figure out some of the upfront things like whether or not they have the discipline to follow through on the rules for a product line and whether or not they have the right organizational structure or the business case. So we see a lot of movement towards the center of the factory pattern before a lot of the detail, or not a lot, but some of the detail, like process discipline and funding, have been taken care of over in the earlier phase of the diagram. So the views that we impose on this are moving from left to right, the established context phase, the established production capability phase, and the operate, operate product line phase. And you can think of focusing on these phases of product line adoption as a way of working your way through this overall roadmap. If you already have the necessary process discipline, then in effect you are following the basic factory pattern, but this layering of views on top of it will still give you a nice segmentation of the major phases of evolution of your product line uh, effort. In addition to these phases, and by the way, these are not absolute linear phases, and in fact we are working with a customer right now to try to convince him that this is not a do everything in the leftmost column first and then move into the rightmost column or the middle column and then the rightmost column. He has this concept that this represents control gates from one phase to the next. And we are saying, well, it doesn't really work that way. What you need to think of in terms of adoption is do something like a cycle or two of an ideal model between the established context and the established production quality or production capability phase. Don't think of it as a strict linear sequencing because the real world doesn't look like that. And as you ramp up a product line organization, you are going to need to learn from the experience of 
restructuring and appointing a champion and coming up with a funding model. So you can't view these as an absolute sequencing of activities. An alternative series of views is to segment along the horizontal axis in terms of things related to the production of products, to the processes, or to the organizational context. And so depending on your focus and your, your needs for product line adoption, you can go either with the vertical slicing or the horizontal slicing. One of our customers is placing a lot of emphasis on the middle layer there, the process discipline and the assembly line with the uh, tool set. Others prefer the previous view of moving through distinct phases, but in an iterative fashion. So the phases and the focus areas do a slice and dice of the adoption factory pattern and behind each cell in the table are the practice areas that implement the specific practice areas of each of these patterns. The uh, shading in the lower right of the rectangle means that the practice areas like launching and institutionalizing and funding and so on, they don't disappear entirely as you move from one phase to the next you need to be aware that they still persist, but you're not pursuing them with the same level of intensity as you did when you got started. And we use the factory pattern as a way of reporting results from our product line technical probe. So rather than reeling off the findings for the 29 practice areas in alphabetical order, we structure them according to the factory pattern, the, the adoption factory pattern. And as a single chart roll up of results, we use this representation, the practice areas view, to highlight in red the areas where we think an organization has particular challenges. So this would be a one chart summary of the findings from a product line technical probe. And typically for organizations that are new to software product lines, over in the top left column here, you will find highlighted in red things like scoping. Uh, depending on the level of process discipline of an organization, the process discipline practice area may be highlighted. And down on the lower left, we find things like they don't really have a concept of operations or they haven't really tackled the uh, funding model problem. We will also typically find a scattering of reds in the established production capability column. So maybe, for example, an organization is good at architecture definition, but not particularly good at architecture evaluation. Or maybe they need to beef up their strengths in the area of configuration management. Most organizations that are new to product lines will have findings of concern to us in the first two phases. For organizations that already have a product line underway, I would expect that the findings and the highlights in red would occur over in the rightmost column for an organization that's actually operating a uh, product line. So the factory pattern and the practice areas behind it in charts like this are a way of presenting the results in a logical fashion related to the adoption stages of a product line effort. And if you look at the Adoption Factory technical report, you will also see that there are what we call the roles and outputs view that show the roles and responsibilities involved in each cell of the table and the typical kinds of outputs produced by the uh, constituent sub-patterns of the overall adoption factory pattern. But bear in mind that it is still just a high-level roadmap. So it's not a strict linearization of activities and it doesn't get into things like the change agent skills or how long it's actually going to take you. And it's certainly not something that you can use just straight out of the box. We think between the 
factory pattern and the patterns collection and the case studies and the framework, you have a lot of good guidance for starting or continuing a product line effort. But there's still quite an amount of work for you to do as an actual product line organization. This gives you an overall context in which to examine your product line efforts. So looking at the factory pattern in terms of its applicability for reporting the results of any investigation you do so that you can present those results in the context of the overall product line effort. Here is the reference for the uh, adoption factory pattern. <laughs>